Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video, doing the ECMDF 30 day forecast of today's first video. So we're going to look at temperature and precipitation anomalies of the UK and the rest of Europe as well for uh, the next four weeks. It takes us well into April. So uh, that's what I'm going to get on with for your first video. We're also going to have a week 10 day video update for all regular features and a cap and the second uh, update counted down to Easter uh, will be the third video released this evening. So quite a busy day coming up at uh, Gav's Weathers today. Right, the Hungarian Met Office, though, uh, for this uh, first video. Um, so, big thanks to Ben for supplying us with a chance. We can't show you mean cell pressure or 500 millibar height anomalies, unfortunately, but we can show you the temperature and precipitation anomalies. You get a rough idea of what model is forecasting from those temperature and precipitation anomalies. So let's go on with it then. I'm going to start off with the week one temperature anomaly for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. And quite a cold week to come in the week ahead uh, with many parts of Europe, nearly all areas really, uh, below average. So uh, we've just got a small area of warmer than average temperature anomalies here. Uh, through the Baltic Sea. I suppose that's because the sea is uh, very uh, much above average after a very mild winter. But most other parts of Europe actually are significantly below average. Uh, so the core of the cold average temperature anomalies across these eastern parts of Europe and down into the southeast of Europe, so sort of around the Adriatic from the Balkans, going over towards the Black Sea, and then northwards up into southern parts of Germany and Poland. We've also got Italy looking quite, uh, quite a bit colder than average as well. But more widely across other parts of Europe, it is below average. UK and Ireland are coming out with a cooler than average temperature anomaly by around a degree or so. And the vast majority of uh, Europe has below average temperatures in the week ahead. Uh, Scandinavia also is average to uh, a little bit below average. And then through the Mediterranean, uh, again, we see below average temperature anomalies through most parts of the Med from Spain and Portugal in the west, where it's only a little bit below average to Greece and Turkey in the east, where it's a little bit more significantly below. I just say Italy standing out as being particularly uh, cool in the coming weeks. So a very chilly week to come across uh, most parts of Europe this week. But it's also pretty dry in many areas as well. Obviously, high pressure is dominating uh, the weather, bringing these cold temperatures. So down in the Mediterranean, it's a, it's a little bit more unsettled for Spain and Portugal, especially for southern and eastern parts of Spain. It was quite wet there. And over onto the eastern side of the bed, we've got Greece and uh, towards Turkey, again, quite significantly wetter than average through those uh, areas. Also, northern parts of Scandinavia, uh, so much of uh, Norway and northern parts of Sweden, we're a bit wetter than average there. But the rest of Europe is drier than average. So from the UK and Ireland and France in the west over towards Ukraine uh, and the Black Sea in the east. Overall, most places are coming out uh, drier than average this week. So a cold and dry week to come. We move through to uh, week two, which is going to be taking us from the 6th through to the uh, 12th of April, week 15 for the year, and it's all changed. Suddenly those colder than average temperature anomalies are gone, and they're replaced with above average temperature anomalies, and quite significantly above average temp temperature anomalies too for central western parts of Europe. So uh, the core of the warmth this time is sort of from Poland, uh, down towards Spain and Portugal, uh, and particularly France into uh, Germany. Again, quite significantly above average temperature anomalies by 3 to 6 degrees. More widely, though, across most parts of Europe, again, temperatures are lifting up. Ireland and the UK, for example, uh, 1 to 2 degrees above average, as is much of Scandinavia. Uh, we've also got many eastern parts of Europe, around uh, 1 to 3 degrees above average on this east side of Europe. And down in the, Med the Mediterranean, we have got an east-west split. So uh, from sort of Italy and the Adriatic westwards back to Spain and Portugal through the central basin of the Mediterranean temperature anomalies are above average. But in the southeastern corner of the Med, it is cooler there. Uh, we still have those cooler than average temperature anomalies persisting by around 1 to 3 degrees um, through, parts of, uh, through parts of Turkey in particular. So, uh, yes, it's cooler than average in the far southeast of Europe, uh, but otherwise most places see a recovery in temperature through this second week of April. 
Moving through to week three, which, uh, of course, is week 16th of the year. This one takes us from the 13th to the 19th of April. Bit of a change uh, again. So this time, the uh, warmer than average temperature anomalies and milder than average temperature anomalies are pushed over to the eastern side of Europe. So the above average temperatures really are stretching from uh, sort of southern and eastern Scandinavia and the Baltic Sea, down the eastern side of Europe to the Black Sea, and also across the western part of Russia. We've also got much of Spain and Portugal above average, and the central basin of the Mediterranean is slightly above average too, but many other parts of Europe are cooling back down towards average or possibly just have no signal. So it looks as though this week is perhaps turning a little bit cooler across some of these western parts of the Europe. Cooler average temperature anomalies are still there across eastern parts of Turkey and in towards the Middle East, but otherwise many other areas either have average or above average temperature anomalies uh, through this week. We're losing the signal for precipitation uh, as well. So Spain, Portugal still coming out drier than average. Some eastern parts of Europe have a very weak signal to be drier than average. Meanwhile, in the north and northwest, possibly have a weak signal to be ever so slightly wetter than average. But you see, most parts of Europe are covered in those white shadings, which is essentially no signal. So we don't have much of a signal for precipitation as we go into the second half of April. And then finally, we've got week four. This is week four temperature anomaly taking us from the 20th to 26th of April. And uh, another change, really. So western parts of Europe, it does look like quite a changeable uh, month to come, actually. Western parts of Europe are now going slightly above average. So have a, we have a stronger signal of temperatures to be above average in week four compared to week three. Uh, we've also got uh, the far north of Europe, across Scandinavia, and into the northwest of Russia with above average temperature anomalies there. Spain and Portugal are also coming out with above average temperature anomalies, leaving much of eastern and southeastern uh, Europe with no signal. So it looks like the cooler temperatures are possibly on that eastern, southeastern side, and the warmer temperatures are possibly in the north, uh, northern and western side of Europe. UK and Ireland is uh, very close to average or ever so slightly above. And finally, precipitation anomalies for week four from the 20th to 26th of April. Uh, a little bit drier than average across the north and west of Europe. So Ireland, UK, France, low countries, Belgium, Holland, Germany up towards Denmark and northern parts of the Poland, slightly driving average through those areas. The very far north of Scandinavia is a bit wetter than average, and then we have no particular signal for precipitation through much of the Mediterranean. High pressure could be dominating across the northwest of Europe uh, as we go into that uh, last full week of April. And that would explain temperature anomalies, perhaps coming just a little bit um milder as well. It looks like a rather changeable uh, April to come, really, with uh, temperatures up and down through, uh, the, through the month. It does look as though the first week is quite clearly uh, the coldest week. So once we get this week out of the way, temperatures are generally staging a recovery. And April overall doesn't look too far uh, from average or maybe a little bit above through um, large parts of uh, Europe. Precipitation-wise, uh, again, it's a little bit mixed, but overall nothing too dramatic showing up here uh, so hopefully from a weather perspective April isn't going to be too bad and there will be a reasonable amount of dry and relatively uh, mild weather once we get this cold opening a uh, few days out of the way. Remember it's just a snapshot of what the model is showing it could all look very different uh, next week any forecast beyond five to seven days comes with a large health warning. We'll be back later on with your week to 10 day video updates. Matt will have all of regular features included with it. And then tonight we'll have a second update for Easter. But that's all for now and thanks for watching.